In this tutorial, we're going to learn all about a website called Kahoot. And the actual address is getkahoot.com. And what is this for? Well, Kahoot is for turning student devices, whether they be cell phones that they own, or whether they be Kindles, or whether they be iPads from the school or from home, or just laptops, Chromebooks, desktop computers, it really doesn't matter, just about any device. But you can turn those devices into clickers, just like the old expensive clicker systems that a lot of schools have in their closets, and a lot of people still use them, and they're great. But in today's world, so many students have something much more powerful than a clicker sitting in their pocket. They have a cell phone, or a smartphone, to be more precise. And that smartphone is much more powerful than those clicker systems. Let's learn how to use Kahoot to turn just about any device into a clicker system. And it's wonderful for formative assessment. You can pull in the information from all of your students, analyze it, and see where you're lacking. Maybe you forgot to teach something. Maybe you need to reteach something. Um, as a teacher myself, this is invaluable information for me. Uh, to learn what I need to do differently or better, or what I need to reteach or review. And then it's also excellent information for the students. They get to see what they need to work on to raise themselves to the standard. So let's get started. I'm going to click sign in to sign into my account. If you don't have an account, of course, you'll go here where it says sign up for free. You'll choose your role. You put in a school or university, put in some account details click create account and that quickly you can have your own Kahoot account. Now in Kahoot there's a couple of places you need to be aware of. When you sign into your account it takes you to this home page basically with your most important tools and links and things that you'll need in order to use Kahoot. Across the top of the screen you've got the ability to make a new Kahoot. You can see a list of the Kahoots you've made in the past you can go to some public Kahoots and notice that there are 14.2 million Kahoots already made. Now, to be honest, not all of these are fully completed, but there's a lot of work already done. You may be able to just find a Kahoot that matches exactly what you teach. So let's say you're a calculus teacher, do a search for calculus, and I know that's not a very specific topic there, but take a look, several different Kahoots already made about calculus. If you want, you can mark it to only show cahoots made by teachers because students do make cahoots as well, and that will narrow the results down a little bit. But anyway, that's a very useful option. And in a lot of cases, you can basically copy these cahoots that other people have made and pull them into your own account. So that's a very important link there. There's also frequently asked questions and support. So those are all very useful links up here at the top. Here's your account information. You can click there to edit your profile, see the results of your Kahoots and, and things like that. I'm going to go back to Kahoot, to the main page by clicking this Kahoot button. And let's focus now on the other important part of the screen. You've got these four big buttons that are quick links to four different things that you can create with Kahoot. And each of these four different kinds of Kahoots are worthy of your attention and your exploration. I'm going to focus mostly on quiz. But as you can see, you can also use Kahoot to generate discussion. You can also use it as a survey, gather students' opinion, get insight, things like that. And there's this new jumble game. So let's jump in to quiz. I'm going to create a new quiz for my students to play on their own devices. First thing I need to do in creating my quiz is give it a title and fill in some other basic information. So I'm going to call this the parts of speech, give it a description, decide for whom it's going to be visible. You can really choose if it's just for you and your students to participate in or is it for everyone. The language and the audience. I'm going to go to school for audience. And this is an important spot where you can give credit for the resources that you use, whether you took questions maybe from a public source or something, or maybe for the images that you use or videos. Speaking of video, you have an option here at the bottom to have an intro video. And as you see there, this is a video that will play while the students are joining your Kahoot. It's a great way to activate prior knowledge and their background information and get them ready to participate in this Kahoot. 
and I'd like to do that so I'm just going to jump out to YouTube and here is a video about the parts of speech in English I'll just go up to the top of the YouTube page click on the URL it automatically highlights the whole thing and then I'll copy that with control C or command C or you can right click on it if you want and choose copy and then I'll paste it in here to the intro video section I should also probably put it here in the credit resources and you'll see the results of that in just a minute now in the upper right corner you can add a cover image which I do recommend so I'm just gonna jump over to Google Images and here's an image that I found that I'd like to use so I'm gonna right click on it choose save image as save it to the desktop to make it nice and easy and then back in Kahoot I can click add image select the image and it's going to try to add that in as the cover image it looks like it worked and I'll click OK go and now now that I've got all that basic information in I can jump in and start building questions for my quiz Kahoot has made it pretty easy to make these quizzes all you have to do is click add question and use this form or this wizard to create question number one so I'm gonna go ahead and say what part of speech is the word dog do I want this to be worth points yeah sure what's the time limit for this question maybe you want to make sure the students have plenty of time or maybe you want them to have to be super quick in their response that's up to you and then you can go in and put in the answers okay now of course you want to put some incorrect answers in there and then put a check mark next to the correct answer it is possible to have more than one correct answer as you can see all right now again if I want to make this a more visual activity I could click add image and I could pull in let's say a picture of a dog from a Google search or a Bing search or whatever it might be so I'll just right click save image as save it in and click add image great I'm done with question one now I just click next and I add question two and repeat the process so give me a couple of minutes I'll create a few questions and then we'll continue with the tutorial okay so let's take a look at what we have I've made three total questions about the parts of speech and they're listed here once I created that last question it took me here to this page now I do have some options here before I save my quiz and use it for one I could reorder the questions if it's important that they come in in a certain order I can make that happen here I can revise a few things I could change the time limits on them if, if I've changed my mind about that I can go in and change individual questions maybe I've made a spelling mistake or some other error I can go in and click edit this question to get back into the editor for it I can also duplicate the question in many cases you'll have two questions that are very very similar instead of just recreating the question duplicating the work why not click duplicate this question now it's almost ready to go just that fast and I can just go in and edit and change a few things to make it totally ready in this case I'm just gonna go ahead and delete that question okay at this point I'm ready to play this with my students so I click Save and it takes me to a screen where I can immediately play it if I want to I can preview it and test it out myself I could share it you can see that there's a link there that you can share it with people or you can put in other Kahooters usernames and click share and they'll basically be invited to use this Kahoot there's some other ways you can share it as well here or you can just get back in to edit it instead of doing any of those things I'm gonna click I'm done Okay, let's say that I've made this Kahoot quiz at home or after school at school and I'm making it for the next day right so I would just click I'm done the next day when it's time to teach the lesson I would go into my Kahoot account and here's my quiz but if you don't see your quiz right there what you can do is just click my Kahoots to get to your list of Kahoots find the one that you want to play and then click play now this is where it gets really fun but leading up to that fun you need to select do you want to play the classic Kahoot this is where each student competes against every other student and each student should have their own device so it says one-to-one -one devices maybe everybody's got a Chromebook or maybe you went to the computer lab and everyone's sitting at a computer or you're having students take out their own devices and every student I guess has a cell phone which of course isn't true usually usually there's a few people that don't have their own cell phone but still if pretty much everyone has their own device this is a great option player versus player what if you have 30 students or 25 students and only six of them have their own device well you can still use Kahoot just do team versus team 
So we get them into small groups and each team, each group has a device to share. So whichever matches your classroom situation better, that's what you do. I'm going to go with classic, but before I click that, I'm going to go to the game options and there's some great options here. You can enable this answer streak bonus where basically if a student gets two answers in a row, three answers in a row, four answers in a row, they start to get these bonuses uh, that help them to catch up or to extend a lead. You can also randomize the order of the questions if you want or randomize the order of the answers, which is very useful because as teachers we tend to have our favorite answer A, B, C, or D, usually C, and so this will solve that problem because it just randomizes where the right answer is put. There's some other options. You can enable two-step join, have the game pin displayed. I'm going to turn that on. What if a student comes in late or something like that? I want them to be able to join. And I'll turn on the instructions. You can have the game automatically move through the questions. And I don't do this very often. Uh, but basically, if you turn this on, you won't have to stand up there and say, okay, let's go to the next question and click. This will just automatically advance through the questions. There's also some experiments that are kind of fun you can turn on. I'm going to turn that off for now. So I'll just go back up to the top and click Classic. And at this point, my video plays. And I'm going to turn, turn down the audio a little bit on that. So my video is playing while students are joining this Kahoot. Now I'm going to bring up my iPhone to show what the student experience would be. But I want you to know that this works just as well with other devices. It doesn't have to be an iPhone. Okay, so you can see my iPhone here at the right. And first thing I want you to know is that there is a Kahoot app in the App Store. You really don't have to have the Kahoot app. You could just use Safari on the iPhone or whatever browser you have, Google Chrome or whatever it might be. You can just open that up and go to kahoot.it as it says here, kahoot.it. But if you do have a device that has a Kahoot app, it makes it slightly easier because the students can just open up that app by tapping it and they're already ready to sign in to the Kahoot. So as the student, I'm going to tap on play now and it gives me a screen where I can put in the game pin. So the app already took care of this, and now I need to put in this game pin. So I'll just tap where it says game pin, and I'll put in the pin. Now this pin is unique to this game that we're playing right now. Not just the quiz that I built, but this particular experience that I'm about to have in my class with my students. So I'll tap enter, and it's giving me the chance now to put in a nickname. Now you can require the students to use their initials, you can have them use first name, last initial, or just let them make up a nickname of their choice, whatever you wanna do. But there are some things to consider. Once the student puts in his or her name, they can tap OK Go, and look what happens in Kahoot. Once that is sent through, the student name appears here on the screen. Now in this case, it's kinda of hard to see it because I chose a video that has a white background but it says Martin right there. Now what if you've got that uh, student that would wanna put in a swear word, an inappropriate comment, you know, something that might be bullying or things like that. Well, what you can do is put your mouse on that inappropriate comment and just click and it will take it out immediately. And if you wanna make sure the students don't see anything like that, just turn off the projector for a minute while you clean up any inappropriate things that the students put in. Now this is why I like to give some credit uh, for participating in this activity. And it's just a couple of points, right? I'll just say, make sure you put your initials in there or your first name, last initial, and that will help you to get participation points for this activity. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and click Start. But imagine 20 students, 30 students signing in here, their names appearing and popping up. And it also gives me a tally here of the total number of players that are in the game. Now I click start, it gives me a countdown, and the students get this message, get ready. Now one thing about Kahoot that's important to know is that the question for the students does not appear on their devices, right? As a student, I'm not seeing what the question is. I have to look up at the projector, look up at the screen at the front of the room, or the TV at the front of the room, and I have to be able to read this question and then answer it down here. Okay, I'm gonna go with noun for that, and Notice it says incorrect. So the students get some feedback on their answer, typically. On the screen, the students and the teacher can see the results, how many people got it right, how many people got it wrong, and so forth. 
Now, something else I love about Kahoot is that the students get some feedback on where they are ranking in the game. So right now, even though I got it incorrect, I'm in first place. But a lot of times it'll say, you're in second place, three points out of first place. Now, what if the student is in 25th place? It still encourages them. Okay, you're in 25th place, you're three points out of 18th place. And so it encourages them, do a little better, try a little harder, and you can move up. I'm going to click next to go to the next question, but before I do, it takes me to a scoreboard where it will list the leaderboard. In this case, since I'm the only player, it's not doing it, but it normally will list the names of the top students so far in this game. Now I'll click next to get to question two. What part of speech is the word skipping? Now the students are rewarded mostly for correct answers but they also are given a bonus for answering quickly, okay? So that's something that's important for the students to know. Now I'll, I'll click next and move on, and now because I'm the only participant, but I do have some points, I do show up in the scoreboard. Let's go on to the last question. Choose the answer, and I got it wrong, and then I'll click next, and it tells you who the winner is, who got the most points. You can then click get results, and as the teacher, you can save the results to your computer. You can do a direct download to your computer, or you can save it to your Google Drive account if you have one. So I just love this Kahoot experience. Now the one thing that is sometimes difficult is the students do have to look at the screen, be able to read it, and sometimes having the answers at the bottom of the screen is a little bit of a challenge, especially if you have a big classroom and the students sit at the back, and then they have to switch their eyes between the front of the room and their own device so that they can answer the questions in Kahoot by tapping on the color-coded section and the shape, etc., uh, to pick their answers. So that is a little challenging for some students, but students tend to just love Kahoot and do very well with it. So I'm going to go ahead and do the direct download. It downloads an Excel spreadsheet to my computer, and now I can click on it to open it up, and you can see it gives a report on how the students did, you can see final scores, question summaries. Um, so it's great for you as the teacher as well as for the students to learn what they need to work on and you can learn what you maybe need to review with the students. So jumping back into Kahoot, notice that over here on the right it says play again and it's got a picture of a ghost. That's called ghost mode. So you could have the students play again and then they can play against their past results. And it's a very interesting experience, ghost mode, where they see, okay, this is how I did last time, this is how the group did last time, and I'm trying to do better this time. So that's kind of fun. You can also go down and just select new game to start a totally different game. So that's the Kahoot experience, at least when it comes to the Kahoot quizzes. So jumping back to the Kahoot homepage, really what I just showed you, the quiz is the most popular use of Kahoot and it's great, but there is also now a jumble game. So when you click on jumble, let's take a quick look at some of the things you can do with this. After filling in the basic information, you click OK Go, you add a jumble question, and then put in the answers in the right order, click Next, and then you could make another jumble question if you want and then save and you can click I'm done or you can play it so now when you go to classic mode and the students sign in it's a little different experience this is different than the quiz that we looked at earlier students tap play now so give me a second to sign in as a student and I'll show you what it's like once the teachers ready he or she clicks start and question number one is about to pop up Order these numbers from lowest to highest, and the question begins. So this is why they call it a jumble, is the students have to decide, okay, where does Cien go? Maybe that's the third highest number, which it is in this case. Siete, okay, that goes there. And then maybe they think setenta goes there, and mil goes there, that's incorrect. But they do the best they can, and then they just tap here on the Kahoot button. So that's a little different experience, but a great way to play Kahoot. So I really hope you enjoy using Kahoot, and please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel to watch more videos about technology for teachers and students, and watch for a new video at least every Monday.